What's up guys, Blade Angel here, and today I'm gonna take you guys on a tour of my 2016 Mustang GT California Special. So I do daily drive this car because the car I owned before was a 2013 Nissan Sentra. I traded that car in for this car, and that left me <laughs> this being my only car. So yes, it's a V8, yes, it's a 5.0. It gets around 18.8 city average, I mean, I would say combined average, and it's, it's not bad. I would say I can live with it. And I mean, for what it is, it's, it's freaking worth it. So I'm gonna take you guys on a little tour about all the weird quirks and features as Doug DeMuro would say, he'd be so proud. And we'll get started with the front about all the cosmetic features. So the first thing you probably noticed, the badge is off center and it is a tri bar. It is the red, white, and blue. And I like it. I mean, a lot of people I know, it, they don't really like it. They think it's weird how it's off center. Some people I know even confuse it with the Shelby GT350 because of it's the Shelby GT350 also is an off center badge, but of course it's badge is a snake. And the GT350, if I'm correct, it's badge is actually off center to the right. So it would be right here, what the fuck? as opposed to being right there, it'd be right there for the GT350. I'm not sure, don't quote me on it, but I think it's on the right side instead of being on the left side. And left, I mean like obviously facing this way, it's the left. And another thing here on the front is the splitter right here. The regular GT premiums and GTs do not have as big of a splitter. And I do like the splitter for the same reason I like the little wing on the back that we'll get around to, because it does kind of remind me of kind of the Mach 1 in a sense and God I'd love to see a Mach 1 for the S550 bodies and I mean that's obviously something that'd be great. Uh, there's some bugs on it. I cleaned the car a few days ago. I'll get around to getting them off so. Another thing here on the front is this hood vent and it does do something really interesting so I will show you guys right now. Aside from being a hood vent it does actually have a little turn signal or a turn indicator so if I turn the car on So if I turn the car on and I, the left indicator's on, you can see that it blinks. It's very gimmicky, you know? Like I said, Doug would be proud. That's probably one of the most useless quirks on this car. And if we turn it to the right, then you see the right one is blinking. If you actually sit in the car, you can't see the right one. So we're gonna turn the engine off now. And I'll get to the engine later, but we're gonna cover all the exterior features. So here on the back, we have the spoiler that I was talking about that the California GT Special comes in and we have the emblem on it. And the emblem, I think the 50th anniversary ones also had something similar, but obviously it says 50th anniversary instead of California Special. I could live without it. I, I really don't care that it's on there or if it weren't there. Um, you know, I don't mind it being there though. So another exterior feature of this car would be its rims, but unfortunately, so, you know, I'll go about on a quick rant about things. So I bought this car real cheap and this may be a greater time than ever to talk about why I bought it in automatic as well. So get, lend your ears and listen. So I bought this car $4,000 under market value and here's why. These are not the California special rims. I'm upset, I'm really upset. The tires, not the stock tires if I'm correct, they are 245 rears, which are pathetic. That's, that's really pathetic. So I'm gonna beef them up to at least 275 because these wheels spin like crazy, which I, you know, I do like rear wheel drive cars and I like how they have a little bit of fun and spirit, but 245s are just way too skinny in my opinion for rear tires. So I'm definitely gonna beef that up. But these are 18 inch rims if I'm correct. Lame as hell, they're not the California Special Rims. I cannot believe the previous owner got rid of them. I imagine that they actually must have curbed them or messed them up somehow. And because of that, he doesn't have the original ones anymore because I don't know why anyone in their right mind would get rid of the original ones. So that definitely made the car lose some value. Another thing about why this car was so cheap, this dent right here. So this dent right here, if you look at it, it's not the end of the world. I mean, it's a pretty nasty one, I'd say, still. And apparently the previous owner backed into a pole and that's how this happened. And if you see here, it does transition kind of on into the, onto the, bump, the bottom bumper near the diffuser area. It's okay though, I am actually gonna replace this entire thing, this whole bottom thing with a GT350 rear valence, or valence, or however you pronounce that. And the reason is because I do want quad exhaust, so if you see here, this car is only dual exhaust. So I may, in order to get quad exhaust for this car, I have to either get a Roush Valance or a GT350 Valance. 
I personally like the look of the GT350 valance better, so I'm gonna replace the whole bottom valance here. And since I'm replacing the valance or valance, geez, I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. But since I'm replacing it anyways, I could care less about this dent here, but I probably will take this to details to get fixed. For now, I've nicknamed it the love tap, so that's what that is. <laughs> I know you guys were expecting some really good or really good reason or argument for me about why I picked an automatic, but that was literally it because it was cheaper. And some of you are probably turning your heads right now like, how the hell is the automatic cheaper than the manual? And this was this was 4000 under market value. It was 2000 cheaper than a lot of the manual GT premiums I could find. So I was like, you know, if this is cheaper than the manual GT premiums, may as well just get it because it's a California special. So I get a California special. So I've brought the car back in the garage to take a look at a few other features. It does shine a horse emblem from its mirror. So yeah, that's a thing. Kind of a gimmick, <laughs> kind of a quirk once again. It does light up this and you can actually change the color of this and you can also change the color of really just everything there because I think Ford has a my color thing. I chose blue. So you see the door handles also light up blue because you know, the car is blue. I could have done red because the car does have red stitching along it. And you know, that would have matched the interior, I guess, but you don't really see that part while driving. So I was like blue, whatever. And the back seats are atrocious, but not as bad as my brother's Camaro. So we're going to move this seat here. And I don't know about you guys, just a little, you know, comment down in the comment section. Do you like power seats or do you just like doing it manually? I like doing it manually because these things always move way too slow all the time. And I feel like manually I can select the exact position I want it to be. Uh, that's just a little nitpick, sorry. So if we take a look at the rear seats, they're not bad. They are what Ford calls full bucket seats. Uh, that may be quite the stretch if you ask me. But the leg room... Yeah, this would be a more accurate one. You've got a good three to four inches of leg room, so it's not the end of the world. See how slow this is? The trunk in this car, <laughs> the trunk, the, the likes, didn't you see that? Didn't those lights blind you? Sorry, that's just me poking some fun at Subaru WX fan, because when he first got the, I think the EcoBoost, that was one thing he complained about was he said the brake lights were too bright when you open the trunks. Ooh, just having some fun. I love the guy, don't worry. <laughs> no, not firing any shots. But the trunk of this car is I believe 13 cubic inches, somewhere around that ballpark. So it's not bad actually, it's really usable. I do like the opening and I know it's not a huge opening, but compared to my brother's Camaro, which you can check his video out about it, it is, this is a way more of a godsend. Like his trunk is atrocious. The opening sucks and he can't fit anything even if he did manage to open it fit it through the opening so i brought the car outside because the lighting is better and i want to go through the interior features of this car i do have the engine on right now so you can enjoy the little rumble of it in the background so if you guys are if you guys watch my videos you've probably already noticed this there are so many fucking buttons on the steering wheel and coming going from a nissan Sentra that literally had one fucking button on the steering wheel which was right there and really someone i do like a lot of older cars in general because they're simpler like holy shit this is this is just too much it's almost like a video game controller so here if you see here we got a whole bunch of options uh let me zoom in on that zoom in i have a fucking gopro i don't have a zoom function all i can do is hold my gopro closer so we do have settings so here's the color thing i was talking about and we can choose the gauge colors and it says not adjustable in daytime. Wow, fuck you. I'm trying to make a freaking video about all my quirks and f features of this car. So we can also go to gauge mode and here we can see a lot of details about the car. And this is really important because you know I, I like it obviously and we have distance to empty. And uh, yeah, this car thing, so it gets around 320 miles on one full tank. So if you look here, I'm almost full. Not bad, like I said, it is pretty expensive. I do fill it up with premium gas, so that's definitely a huge change in pace from someone who used to own a Sentra, but I love every second of it. Got my tire pressure gauge. And if we go back here, now the track apps are where we got some pretty cool stuff. So we have the acceleration timer. And, so we have the acceleration time and we can obviously check zero to 30, zero to 60, zero to 100. And we have a quarter mile as well. And we have one eighth mile. And when you press this, it can do an automatic start or it can do a countdown start. It also has brake performance as well from 60 to zero and 100 to zero. 
So it has a whole bunch of cool interior features. And another thing it has is it has this GPS here, which is really nice. And if we put the car in reverse, it does have a backup camera as we saw outside that was underneath the... So I do like the actual physical blind spot mirror as opposed to a blind spot detector. I turn my head anyways, because you probably see it in my POV videos. I actually physically turn my head back when I check my blind spots. And another really cool thing about this car, all these mother effing switches, I mean, I know the cars push start, I actually, I wouldn't miss the regular key start, I mean, I love key start cars, but, you know, these switches, though, they make you feel like a freaking fighter pilot, and this one, obviously, this one's gonna be your hazards, and this one is your traction control, and it's gonna turn on and off. And the third one is the steering feel. So I keep it on sport because I like having a stiffer steering wheel because I drive nine and three. Once again, you notice if you watch my other videos. And so moving on to the four switch, this is where the fun happens. So we have normal, we have sport plus, we have track and we have snow and wet. And normal is just normal. Sport plus, sport plus loosens up traction control a little bit. You know, it doesn't fully turn off, but it loosens it up a bit and it does increase pedal sensitivity. It's my personal favorite to drive in. If we put the car in sport here, you'll notice that the car no longer has the normal setting. It just has Sport, Sport Plus, and Track. So in regards to track mode, it basically, I believe, it fully turns off traction control and increases throttle sensitivity even more. So you see there's a little helmet there now that says that we're in track mode. So we're going to put it back in Sport mode, actually, and then I'm going to shift my car back into Park. So a few other features. Hood release right here. And the trunk release is right there. All right, I'm gonna have to shout over myself since this engine's so damn loud, but damn do I love it. And if you ask me, it's not loud enough, but I mean, that's actually the exhaust's problem. So I do love the engine. It started to rain a bit, so I probably need to get this recording done quickly before obviously I need to close my hood. Anyways, like I was saying, the engine five liter Coyote does make 435 horsepower, which is up from 420 for the 13 to 14 models, which were up from 412 for the 11 to 12 models makes 400 pound-feet of torque, so it's no joke. It's definitely a fun engine. Yes, my brother's Camaro is still faster by landslide. Whatever, I bought this car because it's a grand tour. I love the visibility, and I can daily drive the crap out of this car. Not that he doesn't daily drive his Camaro, but damn, is I know he's damn jealous of my trunk space and my visibility. <laughs> Anyways, now I did talk about supercharging or turbocharging, so I guess this whole video, I'm gonna kind of talk about the mods I wanna do for this car. I'm gonna get a cat back, so let's just go over them all. Those rims, fuck them. Those tires, fuck them. We need to change that. In regards to the exhaust system and the rear valence, or valence, fuck that word. That's gotta go. We're changing that up to a GT350 valence so we can get quad exhaust. Uh, I believe, you know, probably Borla's or Roush's. I'll take a look at what quad exhaust systems I can find. I'll probably just put a picture of one that I've already found. It's gonna be a cat back system, so not an axle back, because, you know, why not? And. We're gonna get headers as well, because I like. I think that's also a very important upgrade. And finally, we're gonna get a tune once that's all said and done. But what I will not do is, I actually changed my mind. I probably will not supercharge or turbocharge this car. And I daily drive this car. I mean, I love it actually. I love daily driving it. And part of that means, you know, not, you know, saving gas. And yeah, I know it's already 18.8 MPG. That's not exactly the most fuel efficient car, but yeah, I mean, if I'm going to daily drive this car, I don't think supercharging or turbocharging is the way to go. I still want to mod the car, and I still want to get power out of it and make some fun. But I don't think I need, you know, 700 or 800 wheel horsepower. And, you know, you know, I hope you guys respect my decisions. Maybe someday I'll own a fun project car. And until then, this is my daily driver, so I do need to take good care of it. Of course, the sun is now out now that the video is about to end. But anyways, before I end the video, I would like to say I have another announcement, which is that I'm taking a year off university. So what that means is you guys can expect quicker uploads. But more importantly, this was mostly for myself. I need to take care of myself and do things that I love. So I do want to see the country more and I do want to drive the car more. More importantly, I do want to actually go to car shows across the country, meet all types of people, even meet other car YouTubers. And, you know, this is a huge change in my life. Like. If you ask me what I want, what I saw myself doing before, like, you know, after the summer ended, because, like, I made this channel during summer just for fun, and I did not expect to buy this car using the money that I got from the channel and trading in my center, obviously. <laughs> that can't forget that part. And, like, holy crap, like, I just, I'm still mind blown by it, but I want to take, at the end of the day, guys, I've only been on YouTube for four months, and my channel obviously exploded in the past two months, but... 
I'm a young YouTuber, both literally and figuratively. I've not been on the platform for a very long time. So I don't want to screw things up and be an amateur because I'm trying to bounce school and RA and, you know, trying to run a YouTube channel. So I said, let's take a year off and let's, let's get better at this YouTube stuff. And then I'll go back to school. And you know what? I don't see a loss in it because I get to enjoy, that's more time for me to enjoy this car and more time for me to make videos for you guys to enjoy and really just enjoy life in general. So other than that, thanks for watching. And seriously, thank you guys for subscribing and everything that you've helped do for this channel.